Hey there, welcome to the first episode of the second year of my tutorial show. A lot of things have changed, uh, like for example the new intro and there will be even more as you watch this video uh, and I hope you like it. Uh, also my voice is quite different, this is not part of the redesigns, it's just that I'm sick. And because I have to do a lot of coughing, uh, there will be probably a lot of jump cuts too, so I'm sorry for that. The topic of this video is how to draw circles and ovals in perspective. If you haven't watched my previous videos about 1, 2 and 3 point perspective, then I highly recommend that you do, especially the first two ones because they have a lot of essential uh, basics in them. You can click on this information card and I'm going to use them more often in the future uh, and they have all the links that you need. Alright then, let's get to it! Alright, I also hope that you enjoyed the new transition. First of all, what I want to do is I want to just show you without perspective uh, how the circles and ovals are going to be constructed. And what we're going to do is we are using squares and rectangles for this purpose, as simple as that. Now I'm drawing the circle in the square and the thing is it is touching the square at four points, it is tangential, this means it doesn't cross it but just touches it at one point and it's uh, basically parallel. And we can find these four points by simply uh, drawing the diagonals so we can find the center point of the square and then just draw the lines from there. Now if we don't use perspective like in this example then uh, it's a little bit of an overkill, but it is a very useful tool when we are using perspective. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw the circle freehandedly uh, by simply using these points, these four points, and I said that uh, the circle is tangential to the square, which means at these points it is basically parallel and we can use it uh, as a guide. If you want to, you can also draw these lines here. Uh, as an additional guide uh, and the thing is the circle is always outside of this of these sections here they are never crossing these lines here so it is also a good additional guide also it is almost uh, the middle of this section here so yeah but it is not really necessary you can do very well without these lines all right and now we're using perspective and at first I want to draw a perfect square in perspective and for this I simply draw the scale here with 8 units on each side so uh, both sides are equally long and then I simply connect the ends of the scale with the measurement points and there we go we can use these lines to draw our perfect square. There we go. Now I zoomed in and what we're going to do is we are connecting these points here and draw the diagonals and then as I showed you before we are drawing the lines from the center here to find the center points of the edges of the square. Alright, and now what we need to do is we draw the circle uh, from these points here and we keep in mind that the circle is practically parallel um, to the edge of the square at these points and then curves around. And also what I recommend is that you uh, don't draw from one point directly to the other but just, uh, just start um, from these points and curve it just slightly and then connect them at the middle. I think the well in for me it's making it a lot easier. And of course you can turn around the paper or the canvas that you are using uh, which also makes it a lot easier. And yeah, yeah you can see I've done a lot of new uh, redesigns um, for example the little mink sitting down there and just watching. Uh, well I wasn't able to do that much more yet so it's not going to do much so far. 
Um, but I certainly plan on letting it do much more things like uh, jumping around, being surprised, um, picking up things from the background or something like that. Uh, I certainly want to play around with these animations a lot. It just it takes a lot of time to make these animations uh, and therefore I wasn't able to do more than just this uh, very simple idle animation. But yeah, uh, as time goes on there will be a lot more added. Okay, so this is basically the circle drawn in perspective right here. Well, it is probably not perfect, but um, it doesn't matter that much normally when you draw something. We don't have to be totally perfect. Alright, I zoomed out and this time we're going to draw an oval shape. So I take, for example, here 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 units. And from this side, mm, just 5. And then, like we did before, we connect these ends with the measurement points of the opposite sides and then simply draw this rectangle. Alright, okay, I zoomed in again and you probably guessed it already, I just do pretty much the same as before, I, drew, uh, I draw the diagonals to find the center and then draw the lines uh, in perspective uh, to find these points that are the centers of the edges. And then we use them to draw the oval shapes this time. Always keep in mind that at these points it is pretty much parallel and then just slightly curves. Then I connect them at the middle. Here the same. And yeah, there will be uh, a lot of other new announcements like Another thing that I want to do is, I want to start streaming. I want to stream how I work on different projects, uh, like maybe I draw some new animations or uh, I draw just some uh, arbitrary picture, something like that. Uh, and the thing is that while I'm streaming, I am able to talk to you guys, which uh, I would love to. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I also want to draw some video games because um, I am not really able to draw uh, to play anything recently because I'm way too busy with working. And so I can kind of combine those two things uh, and just play some chill games uh, so I can talk to you at the same time. All right, and that's the oval shape in perspective. Again, not perfect, but it is close enough. As an extra, I want to draw something more in detail as a time lapse to give you another example what you can do with these techniques. And I will, of course, get back to you uh, when the time lapse is over and explain a little bit. Alright then. And I'm done. I created this structure by at first creating a perfect square right here at the bottom to draw the circle for the pillar and up here I drew these rectangles and then drew uh, half ovals within them uh, and then simply connected them. Uh, also I made sure that this distance here is the same like here, therefore I created right here a perfect cube again with the measurement points. Uh, I did it uh, the opposite way, like at first I have the uh, square and then I just translated it onto the scale, I got the measurement and I put it right here and used the uh, other measurement point at the right uh, for 
three-point perspective it's a little bit different but I explained that in my three-point perspective video and then just uh, projected it onto this line and there I got the perfect cube that I was able to use um, so that the arch is uh, equally thick on every side. Hmm. Alright, so the basic principle behind it is very simple but still an essential tool if you want to draw in perspective. And in the next video I will explain to you how to draw any other kind of geometric shape and uh, with a lot of different examples. Alright, and now let's get to the Q&A section. And this time I got a question on Facebook via message um, and this person sent me a picture and was asking me uh, why there is this hard bold zone between light uh, and shadow uh, and how I'm how can I explain also uh, that this area here is lighter and there you have the so-called core shadow which is the darkest however we are uh, we are at space so how can there be re reflected light so um, let's look at this picture <coughs> First of all, yeah, uh, you see that this area here is lighter, you just have single cross hatching, uh, well just hatching, uh, and then you have cross hatching with two different lines and then it increases more and more and it gets very dark right here. And then there is this very strong border and then it gets light very quickly. Um, let's at first look uh, at this area here. At the, area that is facing away from the sun, like I guess the sun is over there. Uh, first of all, can there be reflected light? Um, only if there is something like a moon close by. Like for example, the camera is the sun and this is the planet and this is a moon of the planet. And if it's very close but still behind uh, the, the planet, but uh, also kind of facing the sun so it's visible then the light that is coming to the moon gets also reflected onto the surface of the planet so this would be a possibility that the planet would get some reflected light um, however it is not that much so I cannot exactly tell how much of a difference it would make but I guess not that much um, and it has to be in a perfect position and there is no other source of reflected light or uh, additional light sources other planets are way too far away and the stars in the very far far distance are only bright enough relatively bright enough so they can just appear as uh, little white dots but they of course cannot illuminate the uh, surface of a planet or something like that then you could also think maybe there are two suns in this system and one is just simply very small. Uh, well, in this case, uh, well, there are these kinds of systems, but um, for a planet, uh, there would be no chance to develop life, or and especially no intelligent life, uh, because uh, the living conditions would be way too unstable because the uh, the the orbit of the planet uh, would not be like ours, just this almost circular movement around the sun, but very irregular depending on the relative positions of these two suns which also move quite a lot and depending which sun is closer to the planet right now uh, the uh, orbit changes and um, therefore also the temperatures are changing and all this stuff and so yeah. So also not this one. The only possibility, as I said, would be maybe a moon being uh, like behind there. Now would there be this very hard cut between dark area and light area? Well, the transition would be a little bit more significant because, well, why do we have even this kind of transition and it's not like a perfectly hard cut? Um, well, because the curve, because of the curvature of the planet, um, on the surface which is perpendicular to the sun, there are more light rays hitting the surface. Uh, but on the uh, surface which is almost parallel to the um, uh, sun rays, uh, 
only a little bit of sun rays are hitting the surface and it's not as bright and therefore this is the reason why it's darker in the morning or in the evening, you know? And so you would have quite a transition from dark to light and if you look at photographs of our planet Earth then you can also see that. Well, however, art doesn't have to be completely scientifically correct um, as long as it kinda looks uh, believable, it's good enough. Well, in this case, one person had a problem with it and therefore asked me. Um, but I think for most people this looks just fine, I guess. And it could be also a stylistic choice to draw it in this way. You can do whatever you want, of course. And question for you, obviously I'm going to ask you what you think of the complete redesign of my second season. How do you like the new intro, the new transitions and animations, the new thumbnails, the new background, the new logo and banner and so on and so on. Uh, please give me some constructive feedback, uh, I would be very thankful for that of course. Uh, and there will be more coming up, like more animations and stuff like that. Alright, as always, if you have any questions, feedback or requests for me, then please let me know in the comment section. And if you want to help me keeping the show and running, then you can check out my Patreon page, where I also have some nice rewards to offer. Alright then, have fun drawing!